Hello, my name is Cherry Park, and I'm an upcoming third year at Emory University's Nell Hawkson Woodruff School of Nursing. I did my research poster on the research article called The Association Between Sleep Duration and Stroke Prevalence in Korean Adults, a cross-sectional study which was done in 2018 by Kim et al. So what is slash was known about the relationship between sleep and stroke prevalence? We know that sleep is a needed part of our daily lives that helps the body to recover both mentally and physically. It is also known that cerebrovascular diseases are the third leading cause of death in South Korea and that an increase in age is an indication of risk for stroke, regardless of gender. We can see that short sleep duration has been known to cause diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. And while there is less known about long sleep durations, we can see that there is a difference in mortality that is shaped in a U-shaped curve against the duration of sleep. This means that there are higher mortality rates in short and long sleep duration populations than normal sleep. The authors wanted to see if this U-shaped curve would remain true when related to stroke prevalence, and so the authors determined that these following characteristics are determinants of sleep quality. The quantitative features include things like total sleep time, sleep onset latency, and sleep maintenance, while the qualitative features include depth of sleep and satisfaction. A similar study was done previously in the U.S. in 2014, and the authors of that study found that short or long sleep durations increase the risk of stroke when analyzing by age and sex. The authors of this study in Korea wanted to see if there were similar results, and so they set the hypothesis of the study as abnormal sleep duration, short or long sleep durations, will be associated with a higher stroke prevalence compared with normal sleep duration in South Koreans. The participants of the study were collected using data from the Korea National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey from two different periods of time, 2010 to 2012 and 2013 to 2014. Since the authors want to focus on just sleep duration and stroke prevalence, the authors focused on controlling for confounding variables that include sociodemographic, lifestyle, medical history, and mental health variables. The test that was used in order to analyze this data was the Rao Scott Chi-Square test. In this study, the authors used a total of 17,901 adult participants over the age of 19, where 7,369 were in the short sleep duration population, 8,918 were in the normal sleep population, and 1,314 were in the long sleep duration. In this study, the odd ratios were adjusted in four different ways in order to accurately determine stroke prevalence in a normal sleep durations compared to normal sleep durations. The first way it was adjusted is PR1, where sociodemographic variables were adjusted for. PR2 includes sociodemographic and lifestyle. PR3 had sociodemographic, lifestyle, and medical history. And PR4 accounted for all four, including sociodemographic, lifestyle, medical history, and mental health. In men, it was observed that there were higher odd ratio values for stroke in long sleep duration groups for PR1, PR2, and PR3. However, when confound all confounding variables were accounted for in PR4, there was no significant difference between long sleep duration and normal sleep duration groups. On the other hand, in women, it was observed that there were higher odd ratio values for stroke in long sleep duration groups for all four PR1, PR2, PR3, and PR4 groups. As you can see in the graph that has a U-shaped graph similar to the 2014 study done in the U.S. and other studies that have been done in other countries also have similar findings. The reason for the stroke prevalence being higher in abnormal sleep duration differs between short and long sleep durations. Short sleep duration causes glucose shortage in the central nervous system, causing elevated blood pressure, whereas long sleep duration causes a decreased blood flow to the brain. Also, sleep and cerebrovascular disease is bidirectional, meaning that they can cause one another. It is also important to note that stroke prevalence due to abnormal sleep was more prevalent in women. A possible reason for this is due to the menstrual phases that cause higher nighttime heart rates in perimenopausal women. And in the case of South Korea, it can be due to the social cultural environment of Korea where depression in middle-aged women, especially in those after giving birth, were high but seeking out help is difficult due to the negative social perspective on mental disorders. While depression may be a cause for more stroke, the results of the study remain strong as the authors have accounted for and adjusted for these confounding variables like depression. However, a limitation of this is that the data that was collected was collected through self-report questionnaires, which may result in biased answers. In conclusion, sleep duration shows significant differences through social de demographic and medical history in Korean adults and stroke prevalence was partially related to longer sleep durations of more than nine hours. 
Future studies should also focus on high-risk populations and evaluate sleep patterns and lifestyle habits in order to understand the mechanism that relates stroke and sleep duration in order to lead to advancements in stroke management as well as treatment for stroke patients. Here are my citations and thank you very much for listening to my presentation.